today I'm going to show you Doodly. You might have seen ads that you can get Doodly for $67. And is that true? And is it a good deal? It is true, kind of. Uh, because once you get this, once you pay the $67, you're going to want to get the enterprise level of objects, you know, the, the, the cartoons. And you're going to want to upgrade to the rainbow package. So together, that's going to cost you about 200 bucks. Is Is 200 bucks worth it? absolutely you get doodly forever most whiteboard programs it's going to cost you at least thirty dollars a month and, and then you have to store your videos up on their cloud so you have to keep the account active over time i mean this is a super super good deal so yes it's going to cost you about 200 bucks but it's still worth it okay let's get started um, I'm going to keep looking away because I have my transcript over here on everything I want to show you because I want to make this as quick as possible. So I've made notes over here. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new video and we will go ahead and title that. We're going to choose whiteboard, although we have other options. And I always choose a resolution, resolution of 1080 because that's the best. And if you change it later on in the project, it is a big mess. So just do the best quality right from the get-go and then create so i'm going to show you everything and by the end of this video you should be able to use every single feature um so this is going to be quick you do not need to memorize all this this is just kind of letting you know what's possible so the first tab over here these are scenes and these are pre-built um scenes that have all the objects already added to them so you don't have to go and add each one individually you see it's populated over here it has all those objects for you very nice and you can remove the parts if you don't like them and you can rearrange stuff okay here you have characters and you can add your own characters but um, i'm not going to cover that right now but for now i'm going to look for someone in a swimsuit Whenever you add something, if you add it over another object, it will ask you if you want to replace the object or add it new. So that's kind of nice. You can easily replace objects. We're going to do her and I like this guy. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit of organizing here. Um, you can resize objects using the corners. And you can also rotate them here. You cannot crop objects in Doodly, so whatever is on the image is going to stay on the image. So I'm going to put him there, and she's going to be right there. Let's make her a little smaller. Okay, now this right here, these are props, so let's um, search for a sandcastle. Here we go. I'll put that right there. Oh, nope, not that big. <laughs> All right, there we go. Sandcastle. So um, let me just show you all the features here. So like I told you, you can uh, resize it, you can delete it, you can move it forward and back, you know, so we could push it behind the beach or behind the, the board so you can um, change the layer. You can flip it. Um, this gear icon here allows you to change the position in a very complicated way. It, um, you can change the animation of how it enters. It can either just appear or you can have it hand drawn, which is what you know we normally do, and you can choose the exit animation. You can also choose to remove the color and make it black and white, and that's not going to be active until we click apply. But anyway, I will leave that on, and so that's what you can do there. And then this right here, uh, if you don't like the way something is drawn on there, you can actually edit that. I don't normally do this. This panel is really only useful to me when I'm adding my own objects, which we'll cover later. So, oops, we got to return without saving. Okay. So here, right here are your fonts. You can search through them to pick the one you like. You can also add your own font packages. So you just drag that over. You double click it and you change this to something else. The gear allows you to change the color. So if you want this to be purple instead, and it lets you change the animation and other things as well. So now I wanna show you what I think is the coolest feature, and that's your ability to add your own graphics. So I'm gonna um, add one under props. I'm gonna click the plus sign, I'm gonna browse, and I have another sandcastle. So I wanna use a different one, and I'm gonna go ahead and 
go ahead and add that. Okay, so it'll automatically add it to your project. And um, I'm gonna put this one up here. It's gonna be a giant sandcastle. So now I need to edit the path that it's drawn. By default, it will start in the top left and just fade over the object, but I want this to be drawn. And so what I'm gonna do is add these lines and you can also adjust the thickness of the line. So I want the bottom layer drawn first, I can adjust uh, the, the location of each line. And to create a new path, what that means is the person's hand is going to lift and then draw again. So if you just do this all as one path, it's just going to be scribbled all the way up. But if I want the person's hand to, to pick up then I need different paths. And, and you'll see how this is um, working here. Path one, path two, and the hand will lift every time. So um, that's how that works. Let me get this adjusted. That path, um, that the way that it's drawn, that is saved now forever with that object. So you only have to do that one time and then every time you use that object, it's already preloaded. Okay, the preview option is pretty cool. Here it's gonna show you what's happening over time. And then over here you can adjust things. So if you don't like how something is happening or where it's at, you can adjust that you know, while it's being drawn or you can pause it and adjust it. So it's kind of nice. You can see it happening and you can make adjustments at the same time. Okay, over here the grid is just nice if you want to, you know, to lay things out perfectly. You can also choose to snap to grid and that kind of makes it nice to make sure you're on the grid. I don't actually use the grid. Down here is your timeline and this has different features here. One of them is the settings. This allows you to change your background and change your hands that you want to use. This is where you can also change the resolution, but remember that's going to cause a problem. Now, these settings here apply to the entire video. If you want to change it for just one scene, and by the way, a scene is like a new page. So this is one page of drawings. And then if I wanted to start over with a blank slate, I'd click add and I, now I have a new screen, a new page to draw on. That's what a scene is. Sometimes you might want to change a setting for a scene for just that scene. Um, so here, you click on scene settings and then here you can make some adjustments there on um, you know how you want the scene to end, if you want to add extra time, if you want a different erase mode for this particular scene. Okay. This right here is for um, zoom and pan. And the first time that you add a feature, you have to actually right click. And then once you have that, once you've added your first pan and zoom, you will then have a plus sign. You can add more. And so basically this is before and after. So, so you click on the little space. This is what your scene looks like before. And that is typically locked. You can unlock it and change things and try it. You'll see how it works. Uh, but typically you'll leave that locked and then you will just adjust over here where we want it to pan to. And then uh, we can watch this. Let's go to preview so you can see what this does. And now we're zooming in and there's nothing there, but, um, and it will stay zoomed in until we add another pan and zoom to change that. So then you go here and you see it's locked to the last position and then you change it here that you wanna to zoom on something else, or maybe we want it to move. That's called the panning. And so let me show you what that looks like. So see, now it's moving across. Those are really cool features. The length of this bar is how long that pan and zoom will last. So you can adjust that. Okay. These are where you put your audio. And so here's your audio tab. You can upload your narrations and you can also search for stuff and add it to the timeline. I'm just going to add a few weird things, just some pops on there. At random, you'll typically adjust those to objects. And then here you'd add your um, your audio. 
and then you can make adjustments. Where did that come from? And you can make adjustments. Oh, so I just recorded myself. That's a new feature. I haven't done that before. Okay, now. Okay, so now I'm going to show you this over here. This is the tricky part that confuses people because this is set up different than any other video software ever. Normally things are down here on the timeline on layers and this is totally different in Doodly. They're over here and every object has a different timing. You have a delay and you have a duration. By default, the delay is zero, the duration is three seconds. You will definitely want to be adjusting this. Um, so like, I want this to happen fast, okay? So like say five seconds and then I want this to take one second to draw. And so you, you time this out. So for example, I have this voiceover that says, um, you know, maybe you've been dreaming of this beach vacation and building a sandcastle. I have the perfect vacation for you. So I have that down here. So I want things time to appear with that voiceover. And that's where this comes in over here. So what you do is you, you use preview mode to watch when things are happening and then you make adjustments over here. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to fast forward the video. So just watch and learn. Okay, so now I have the, the scene actually ends before I'm done speaking about it. And so sometimes you'll want to go to scene settings and you'll want to add extra time at the end. Uh, where the scene just sits there and the voiceover continues. And so, the perfect vacation for you. So it's going to just sit there before the, the next scene starts. Uh, so now I could add panning and zooming. So that would be the final thing that you do. If you want to add, you know, a zoom feature somewhere in here where it zooms in on something. That's the final thing you do. So my strategy for building is usually I build my scene. I get all my objects on there first. Then I put on my voiceover, and then I adjust the timing, and then I do panning and zooming. Then I go to my next scene. And then when you're done, you export as a video, and there you go. So I have a little manual down in the description. You can pull up the manual and use that. It's just kind of like a visual guide. I also have a, an e-learning website because I, I build e-learning courses with videos and voiceover and all kinds of things for companies. So check out that site. And then finally, if you're a teacher, I offer graduate courses through CSU, the cheapest courses around. You've got to check it out. T totally innovative and cool stuff. Also down in the description. And I'll, of course, subscribe and like the video if it's good. I mean, if you don't like it, it's okay. You don't have to subscribe either, actually. You do what you want. You do you. Thank you.